Well, switching gears a bit, um, let's talk about your work in road network and urban planning. So um, in your PhD research titled Going the Extra Mile by Design, you proposed a method to design road networks with targeted travel impendence. That means building in how easy or difficult it should be to move through a city, depending on broader planning goals. So how does that work in practice? Yeah, yeah. So this is really like two chapters of my kind of three chapter PhD thesis is on generating what we call stylized road networks. Um, and the background for this research is that we know that particular properties of a road network, like, um, like how gridded it is, or how kind of um, suburban it is, um, impact you know, how people use a transportation system and how those transportation systems should be designed and operated. So I'll, just, I'll give you a few examples. Um, if you think of kind of a, a bus network design in a city, like that optimal design is going to be different if your road network is very gridded versus if it's radial and you have a lot of streets that are kind of converging to a center point. Um, Other examples, um, if you're trying to figure out where to place a like a hospital or a school, um, you want to put those um, facilities in areas that are highly connected so that people can easily access them. Um, if I if you're a pedestrian, for example, there's research that shows that um, pedestrians are more willing to walk longer distances if the street blocks are smaller in size. So there's kind of different ways that what a road network looks like impacts like how people use it and the transportation systems that operate on it. Um, so what we're trying to do with this research is create these stylized networks, kind of mathematical representations of networks that researchers can use kind of as planning tools. So they can solve problems on the networks and see what their solution looks like and how that solution might differ if their road network looks like something versus something else. Um, and so kind of in the networks that we create, the, the properties we control for um, get at the kind of the characteristics of travel distance and time on the network. Um, so it's really like, If I start at point A and I want to go to point B, what's how long does it take me to to get from point A to point B, basically? Kind of understanding that um, cost is like one of the biggest drivers of what a transportation system looks like or how you use it, like as a as a driver or as a pedestrian, for example. So your work uses circuity and inefficiency as key metrics for evaluating and designing road networks. So could you walk us through how these graph-based metrics are defined and why they offer insights beyond traditional metrics like travel time or distance? Yeah, so so basically kind of I'll, I'll define what these metrics are. Circuity is kind of a normalized measure of travel distance. So if you're going from point A to point B, circuity tells you what's the routing distance from A to B on the road network compared to the straight line distance. So it's telling you like how winding kind of the path is from A to B versus if it's a straight shot. Um, and then um, an efficiency does something similar, but just for travel time. So it's really like a measure of what is the travel time from A to B versus like what's the distance from A to B. Um, and so the reason that we look at these metrics instead of just distance and time is that the metrics are normalized by kind of scale. So if your points are farther apart or closer together, then you can still have like the same circuit or inefficiency values. And the same thing if you look at all the, the pairs of points on a graph. You can have a very large graph um, with lower high circuity, for example, or a very small graph with lower high circuity. And so it allows you to like compare graphs. Um, I say graphs is kind of like the, the mathematical representation of a road network. Um, but you can have road networks that are 
very small and very large, and you can compare their attributes apples to apples. Um, so that's kind of why we why we normalize them. But there's there's like a ton of there's a whole family of metrics that you can use to quantify properties of road networks. Um, and so this is really kind of like a growing field is trying to apply these mathematical concepts um, to a new kind of like network application so we can kind of better understand um, kind of what a what a network is doing, not just like what it visually looks like. Well, your work with the ENO Center of Transportation, um, in that work, you noted that 17 of the 20 largest transit agencies in the U.S. have launched network redesigns in the past decade. So based on your research work and your experience, what advice would you offer to these agencies as they take on these complex and often quite contentious redesigns? Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll preface this by saying I'm like not an expert in bus network redesigns. Um, I think like the real experts are the cities and the consultants who do this and who are really good at it. Um, I, I really wrote this article to look at what are some of the, the commonalities in these redesign efforts and what can we learn from them? Um, because so many transit agencies have embarked on them in the last 20 or so years. Um, so I, I think transit agencies in general are in kind of a difficult position right now, you know, with like inflation and rising costs of wages and lower ridership after the pandemic. Um, you know, there's, there's are real shortfalls in a lot of agencies operating budgets and they're having to make a lot of hard decisions. Um, so I think it's, it's important to think is of redesigns as one tool that can maybe help. Um, but I think it's also important that agencies are, um, kind of have a clear understanding and are transparent with their writers of what's possible and maybe what's too expensive. Um, so for example, like, maybe you can um, reduce the headways on routes from 20 minutes to 10 minutes in one area. But maybe that means you have to cut weekend service on another route. So it's kind of um, a system where you, you're going to have some winners and some losers. And it's only pretty rare cases where you can redesign your bus routes and have everybody be a winner. Um, so I think one of the best things that agencies can do is take um, take writers and the people they serve along for the process and get input from them in lots of different forms and really make sure that their priorities and kind of their lived experiences are represented in the final product. Because um, I, th I think also this is another example of something we can model kind of mathematically and we can get at some interesting solutions of what a bus network should look like if we have certain objectives, but it's also the people who are using that service every day who you want to make sure that they're kind of um, what's important to them is reflected in the final design. But you have to, as always, you have to manage balancing, maximizing efficiency and also maximizing, you know, making sure that everyone is still happy and it's an equitable solution. Yeah, exactly. And not to say that there's ever a perfect solution, but um, I think if you use all of these tools kind of how in ways that are beneficial, but not like overusing models, you can get to a better solution than you could have otherwise.